Hello everyone, welcome back to Trust Basket. I am Indu Priya. So far, we have seen propagation of plants through leaf cuttings, stem cuttings, and also by dividing. So now let me just tell you some different kind of propagation method. So generally, plants produce flowers and seeds, and through seeds they pass on to the next generation, or they can get multiple plants out of them, right? But when it comes to ferns, they do have roots, stems, and leaves just like any other plants, but they do not produce any flowers or seeds. So how do you think they propagate? Yes, of course, we can also divide ferns just like we do it with snake or zizi plants, but they also propagate through some another method, which is through spores. Unlike the dispersal of spores through wind or water, we can also propagate them through spores manually. So let me just try to show you how can we do it. So to propagate spores, first of all, we should make the media ready. So for that, I have chosen this uh, cocoa pit because cocoa pit will be sterile and it will be free of pathogens and weed seeds. So now this block has expanded well. So I'm just gonna disturb this. Although this cocoa pit is sterile, I just want to sterilize it one more by running hot water through this cocoa pit. This is the hot water I am just pouring on this. Make sure the pot has drainage holes so that water goes out and our cocoa pit will be sterilized. You can even go for sterilizing it twice, but I think once is, is just enough. So now I let this cocoa pit cool for some time and uh, meanwhile we'll make the rest process ready. So to germinate spores, take any container that has a lid like this or if you want to take any pot then you should go for covering it with a plastic bag but as i have this container with lid i'm just going for it so first of all i'm gonna add a layer of perlite into this container make sure the perlite is uh, rocky but not uh, powdery so now i'm going to add a layer of cocoa pit on this perlite so I'm just squeezing it and I'm going to use it. Actually the layer of perlite which we used below provides air pockets and it helps in providing air for this growing media and it also lifts the growing media so that excess water drains down. It is always better to choose sterile media like a cocoa pit and vermiculite for this process because choosing garden soil is risky because there will be many pathogens and there will be a risk of contamination. So just go for using any sterile media. So now this media is all ready to take spores now. So now let's see how can we collect spores from ferns. So when you see any fern plant, leaves of ferns will have these kind of structures. But when people see, they think that this plant is affected with some disease or anything like that. But it is completely okay to have these kind of reproductive structures on ferns. Actually, when you see the back side of the leaves, you will find these structures. Actually, these are known as sporangia and inside them spores will be there and through spores, we can get new ferns. So to collect spores, we need to collect a frond of these ferns. So yeah, so with this, we're gonna take spores. So now we should place this frond in an envelope like this and we should leave it for four to five days. So in that time, the sporangia will be desiccated and uh, spores will be released. So let's do it. So I'm just cutting this frond into pieces to place it inside this envelope. So now we should not disturb this for four to five days. And after four to five days, we just need to tap it so that spores will be collected at the bottom. And then we can use that spores for germinating. So 
before four to five days i have already placed a front inside another envelope and this is it so now i'm going to collect scores from this front so now i'm just bringing this fronts out they're all dry and i hope they're desiccated also I hope this has many scores. Yes, it has. So let me show you by cutting this envelope. So now I'm going to add these scores evenly on this growing media. So now I have spread enough spores in this container. So by this we completed sewing spores. So now we can close this box and keep it aside for a few weeks. And by few weeks or a month, we can see an algae type of growth on the surface of the container. And then you don't panic because that's how they grow. And after that, again in few weeks, we'll get to see young ferns coming out of them. And there we'll be succeeding propagating them through spores. So yeah, this is how we propagate ferns through spores. So, so far we have discussed about different propagation methods in different plants. So let me just quickly tell you which method is best for which plants. So when it comes to climbers like pothos, philodendrons and English ivies, placing their cuttings in water until they take rooting and transplanting them to soil is the better option. And when it comes to rubber and croton plant, placing their cuttings into the soil is the better option than going for water. And even in ZZ, snake plant and aglonema, placing their cuttings in soil is best but I would recommend going for dividing because it's a quick process and we can get many plants in less time. Even in aloe vera and ferns, dividing is the better option. So now let me share some tips to master the process of propagation. So now I'll try to list them in order, so please do follow them. So whenever you think of propagating your plants, do propagate them in right time. I mean propagate them in their actively growing season. So spring and early summer is the best time to propagate plants. So do propagate them in the months of March, April, May and June so that you'll end up with good results. And the second thing is always use sharp pruning tools because if the tools are not sharp, we'll be just ending up with either damaging the plant or wasting the cuttings. So we don't want these things to happen so use sharp tools so that we can make cut in one go. We can also use gloves whenever we go for cutting because some plants use sap and some plants sap could be poisonous or toxic. So when they come in contact with the skin, they may result in skin irritations, rashes or some other type of problems. So right after the cutting session, do wash the pruning tools and gloves properly or at least keep them away from children and pets. So this is all about today's video and let's meet in the next video of the indoor gardening series. Until then, stay tuned to Trust Basket. Bye-bye.